All right, folks, today we're talking gimbal moves, and I will show the three best gimbal moves that you have to learn to capture super smooth footage. And then I'll show you how you can combine these moves so you can take your gimbal footage to the next level. Alright, to capture super smooth gimbal footage like the one you just saw, there's a couple of things you have to get right before you get started. First of all, make sure that your gimbal is properly balanced. This is very important because if it isn't balanced correctly, it can cause jitters and shaky footage even though you use the correct gimbal techniques. And the second thing is use both hands on your gimbal because this will give you much better control over your gimbal and your movements. And as you can see on my gimbal here, I have the side handle because this gives me the best control possible because it gives me a wider, a wider posture when I shoot with the gimbal because I open up. And what happens when I open up? I straighten up my back. But if you don't have the side handle, just hold the gimbal down low, down under here. As, and as you can see, don't push it forward like that because that will bend your back forward, straighten up your back, shoulders back and then pull the gimbal a bit in. Then you'll have the best posture when you shoot with the gimbal. But if you have the side handle, it will give you the better control. I would suggest investing in a side handle if you don't have one. I'll leave a link in the description for the one that I use. So let's take a look at the edit and break it apart so you can see what gimbal moves are used and how I combined them. There are actually only three basic gimbal moves in this edit and I paired it with some handheld shots and of course some drone footage. Because if the edit was with the gimbal shots only, we would only have wide shots and no variety. So I like to put in these tighter detail shots that I shoot handheld and then I like to do the drone to get that overlook of the property. But let's break it down so you can see how I combined these moves. All right, so the first game moves we're gonna take a look at is of course the push-in shot because the push-in is the most basic one that you have to learn to do any move because you're pushing forward, you're walking forward with the gimbal, use the heel to toe to dampen some of that movement. But what you do, you take your gimbal and then you just push forward in one steady motion. You can either do this in PF mode or in lock mode. In this edit here, I used lock mode. In this move, I used lock mode, pushing forward towards the terrace. But as you can see here, there's a little bump on the road, there's a step up. And the way that I conquered this is that as soon as I step up on the step, I move the gimbal down so you won't notice that shift in my movement. I actually shot this twice. I wasn't pleased with the first one because you can actually see that shift when I'm stepping up. So a good thing is watch some of your footage back uh, once you're on location. All right, so that's the push in and what I did in the edit here, I actually re reversed the clip so that I'm pulling out instead because I thought that this was a better way to end this edit. All right, so the next move is panning. And what is panning? Panning is when we pan over one of the motors. Here we're panning over the pan motor. So I'm moving forward and I'm panning the gimbal towards the side. That is how we pan with the gimbal. Sideways like this is not panning. Panning is when we move the gimbal like that. We pan over the pan motor. In this edit here, I was moving forward as you can see right here, and I'm slightly panning the gimbal to the side, revealing the terrace once again. Yes, I was using this terrace as my subject. And in the edit, you can see here, I speed ramped it, so we are, we are pushing in very fast and we are panning to the side. And here in the end, you can see we're slowing down the footage. And if you wanna see this shot in real time, it looks like this. Uh, there isn't really much to it, so you can just slightly see that the gimbal is panning to the side. So for the last move, I used tilting. And tilting is something that I use very much, and it's a very good thing to know. Because tilting is where you tilt the gimbal either up or you tilt the, or you tilt the gimbal down. 
In the first move here, you can see that, I'll see, I'll put it into um, pan tilt follow on the DJI gimbals, and if you have a Shun gimbal, it's just follow. And what does that does is that it enables me to kind of push the gimbal forward here, and then it tilts forward, or I can tilt the gimbal up, and it tilts up like that. And you can change the speed within the gimbal. I have mine, mine set to very slowly. But in the uh, edit here, you can see we are tilting up against the facade or the front of the the hotel here you can see the name of the hotel we're tilting up you can also see we've got some foreground on the side here that is disappearing while we're tilting up so that is how i do the tilt shot all right so that's the three main gimbal moves that i used but i combined them so that they were a bit more interesting so I combined the push and the pan as you saw we're pushing forward and we're panning to the side but I also combined the push the tilt and the pan you can see in this shot here on this shot here where I'm I'm tilting the gimbal down but I'm slightly panning it and pushing it to the side so we're pushing forward I'm tilting down and I'm panning the gimbal to the side. It's a very nice move. It looks very, very good. So that's how you can combine some of these shots to make them more interesting because a simple push-in shot isn't always that interesting unless you have something very interesting to push push against or push forward to. So that is, uh, that's, that's the combo version of these three shots. And you can get very creative with doing this. As long as you know how to do the basic uh, techniques or the basic moves, you can combine a lot of these moves to some very, very creative stuff. All right, if you wanna learn some more about some of the gimbal moves that I use or other creators use, I actually broke down how Peter McKinnon made the DDR RS2 video. He used five basic gimbal moves that I break down in the edit and how he used it. So go watch that, I will link it down here. It's a good video and you can learn a lot about how they combine these moves to make it look, look super interesting. All right, folks, I don't have any more for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something about these three simple gimbal moves. If this is the first time you're here, remember to subscribe if you want to learn more about filmmaking with motion. And of course, you can always join my Gimbal Academy. The link is down in the description. Lastly, stay creative and stay safe. And if you can, go out and shoot some dope videos. See you next time. Bye.